This is Sasha Chua talking with Carson Dominic about Emacs. Hello. Hi, this Hi, is Sasha. Sasha. I'm, I'm putting on my headphones. Is that uh, useful? Yes. I think the sound is better like this. Yes, I have my headphones on too. I am super excited to talk to you because you are one of my Emacs heroes. <laughs> That's great. I'm so, I'm also excited to talk to you because I've been reading your blog for I don't know is it uh, ten years now or whatever. <laughs> yes, yes, it has been. <laughs> and it's always yeah. been a lot of fun. Yeah, and, it, and my blogging has has come about just you know just because of Emacs and Planner, and now that I'm using Emacs, yeah, I remember. And, yep. Yeah, and and now you know I've moved to Emacs and Org mode, and that's all due to you. So thank you, and thank you for the, taking the time. I'm sure this will be fun. I'm doing these chats with uh, with other Emacs geeks because uh, it's you know it's it's kind of nice getting to know the people and the stories behind how people are using Emacs, and I find that we we learn so much when we're peeking over someone else's shoulder as they use Emacs or as they talk about how they use Emacs. So that's why I've you know I've really enjoyed talking to people like John and Thomas and the others. Uh, and I would love to hear about your story, how you got started, you know, how you use Emacs, um, maybe how you configured it, and other cool things you learned along the way. So, okay, yeah. okay, well, yeah, sure, I can get started. Well, I started with uh, some other flavor of Emacs actually many years ago when I was still doing my PhD in uh, in Berlin. This is mm -hmm. where I come from, from Berlin. And uh, I was there in the Astron Trust Astronomical Institute, and there was a geek there who basically installed the first computers there. there was, those were all Atari computers at the time, so nothing more fancy. And uh, he was a fan of Micro Emacs. I don't know mm -hmm. if you know Micro Emacs. That's the uh, Emacs flavor which um, Linus Torvalds actually uses, I think, right now. Mm -hmm. It's sort of, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, not totally unrelated uh, to Emacs, but it has similar standard basic key bindings and it's a, it's a smaller, smaller thingy. And uh, so that, uh, that geek in that institute introduced me to micro Emacs and I started using it as my editor. And it actually also had an extension, extension language. So I started writing some macros for it because I'm, programming was just fun. I, I got started programming using pocket calculators and stuff like this. <laughs> And um, no, really. I mean, I, I was actually yes. in a club in, in a club where we were doing programming of uh, HP and Texas Instruments uh, calculators. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, so I started uh, programming some things. I, I was uh, writing my thesis at that time, and so I was writing the thesis uh, in LaTeX, and I, I started to put some basic LaTeX support into this editor, and I also implemented a spell checker, which was basically just. Um, um, just uh, linking through to the to the Linux uh, to to the Unix uh, spell command below and just uh, checking individual words and uh, doing stuff like this. And uh, so that's uh, how I got started. And I actually pushed that pretty far. I worked a couple of uh, years on on Micro Emacs, but uh, then really hit uh, hit the limit. I mean, sort of uh, the macro language there is is kind of nice, but it's not really. It doesn't really reach far. Uh, if you want to do something more complicated, uh, you really reach uh, your limit. And so after when I le when I left Berlin, I, I went uh, for a postdoc uh, to America, and there I started uh, with with the real Emacs, <laughs> and um, I've uh, never looked back. It, that, that really t um, taught me, I think, something really basic because uh, I've at that time I made the decision that I would never start using an inferior tool because <laughs> it, it, it it doesn't really make sense. So for example, um, I I didn't use Orc. I used, I used Perl because I, I knew that uh, if you try to program something with org, you will just uh, hit your head against and, the wall at some right. point and Perl is just so open-ended that whatever you want to do, you will be able to do in this language. Yes. And I think the same is uh, true for Emacs. So that's basically, that's just uh, completely unlimited. Whatever you want to do is, uh, is, is there. Yeah, okay. So then I started uh, using Emacs. I think it was mostly X Emacs at the time because I think that was in the early 90s. So Emacs was uh, kind of uh, slow going, yeah. extremely long release ahead. cycle. Right. And uh, X Emacs much more was happening, so I was uh, doing that. And I mean, I'm I'm really a guy. I hate repetitive tasks. So if you if you ask me to do something, and I if I can find a way to write a program to do it and that will not take more than twice the time to do it by hand, I will go the programming <laughs> because I, I just um, hate that uh, so much to do something repetitive. So I just uh, started uh, writing writing uh, little things and initially mostly also LaTeX uh, and, and tech related because this is uh, how, how I, was, I was writing my stuff and it uh, sounded like this, uh, that this is the most useful stuff. So I'm 
Yeah, in a way, I'm uh, with with Emacs with my Emacs programming. It's uh, really a, a scratch my own itch approach. Absolutely. So because so over these years, I've written really a yeah an, a huge amount of Emacs code, and it was always because uh, something which I needed, and then in a way it uh, got out of hand because it was so much fun. And if you get feedback from a community, I'm sure you know that exactly from your planner times, <laughs> then you yeah. can uh, can easily get uh, carried away. And you've you you've definitely gotten carried away. It seems. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everyone I talk to, you know, that yeah, that they're like Orgus is really something that's taken over people's lives and um, and has worked its way into into how they work. So that's fantastic. yeah. I think it's uh, it, it's really amazing to hear to hear from real world people who actually use it. I mean, if, at some point you only think that there's kind of this geeky group of uh, followers which you have uh, but then you find out that the guy next door um, is giving a course about reproducible research and uh, <laughs> wants to talk about org yes. mode and stuff like this so this is um, uh, this can be a lot of fun yeah so reproducible research and literate configuration and a lot of other things are coming out of this what are some of the other you know unusual or awesome things you've heard about in terms of people using your code well, um, yeah well it, uh, yeah if you're now talking about org mode in particular, I think um, yeah, I, th I think this this uh, reproducible research stuff is uh, really great, and in particular, all these I mean, these code embedding and code evaluation things mm -hmm. is something which actually totally took me by surprise. I mean, I would have never thought about this. I think I actually implemented sort of putting in examples and maybe source code snippets with some highlighting because of course I thought that uh, looked nice, but uh, then uh, Eric Schulte came along and. Uh, just uh, ran with it and uh, together with Dan Davidson implemented all this uh, this execution stuff, yes. which I would never have uh, thought about. I mean, uh, well, that was uh, completely uh, new for me. Yeah. <clears throat> that is awesome. And then the other thing which is being worked on right now in org mode, I think a lot, is is uh, the exporter. There's yes. a, a, com a complete revamp. I don't know how up to date uh, you are about this discussion. But so the, ent the entire set of exporters which uh, go out uh, to HTML and to LaTeX and to ASCII and uh, uh, what have you are being totally revamped with a basic um, parser design. Yes. It's, it's actually also an interesting story behind it because when um, when we started with Orkmut, I remember that quite early I got in touch with John Weekly, the famous yes. uh, John Weekly, also everybody is talking about. <laughs> and um, he actually at the time offered to use Muse as the backend for mm -hmm. doing the exporting. And um, at the time, while well, I was thinking about this, but uh, the other sort of on the other hand, I had uh, Bastien Guerri moving in, and he yes. was writing um, a LaTeX uh, exporter, and so I didn't really want to sort of throw out all of his code. So in the in the end, I didn't really make a decision, and that meant that um, that we weren't going the Muse way. And I think now, after like ten years, I think that's ten years ago. Or so. <laughs> um, this has paid off because I think now the parser model, which has been implemented in Orkmut by Nicolas Goyatsu, is um, is actually a better and more abstract way to go um, than even the the Muse exporter was. So I think in in this sense, uh, in the end, uh, this uh, was a was a good decision. But it has has taken a long time. But I mean, you have to imagine we had all these exporters. I think we had like five or six different backends, and each exporter has had its own parser. That was and so that means if somebody in the code was was changing or if uh, if somebody had a little bug or so, then we had to change this in five different places in five different ways. And so they were never quite compatible and uh, things like this. And this is all about to change now. I'm uh, really excited about this. So um, Bastia and Nicolas and all the people who have been working on this uh, right now, this is, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to this when this will be finally rolled out in, in uh, Release 8.0, I think it's coming out in a few days. I'm very, very excited you. about that too. The export functionalities were one of the things that Avati was talking about in terms of technical yeah. authoring. It's, it is really awesome to have all of that come from come from org. Yeah. So yeah. yeah it's also, I mean, for myself, org mode is, um, I mean, I do use it for project planning and for brainstorming and sort of all my writing I do in it. And that's, I, that's also one of the reasons why there's um, just a, a number of little convenient uh, editing functionality so in a way I basically use it as my fundamental mode so I don't have files and text mode anymore it's basically yes. the basic mode I go to when I want to just uh, throw out some thoughts and uh, restructure them and uh, so that was 
that was really at the beginning. So when uh, when we started, uh, when I started doing it, it was about uh, making an outline and being able to uh, to restructure this and show things around. So the planning came actually a little bit later, mm-hmm. and actually I, it's it's actually quite funny because at the time I kind of had a bad conscience towards you and John. <laughs> because I was, I was rolling into this area where the two of you had uh, done uh, such amazing work uh, putting together a planner. And originally, I had never had the intention to sort of write no, an alternative. No, no, it worked out perfectly. Just, um, yeah. I remember because I, I was struggling with uh, Planner Mode's uh, approach of having everything in multiple files and then having, well. or- okay. yeah, having org yeah. with a single file and a good agenda mode and all of that stuff was yeah. made a lot of things so much easier. Yeah, it was just a completely different approach, basically, uh, towards the same uh, project, to the, to, towards the same problem. Yeah. So, yeah, we totally jumped ship with everyone else. We're like, yes. okay, this is good. <laughs> Let's go with that. That was, a, that was amazing. Yeah, I, I, I mean, when, uh, when I heard that uh, both John and you had stepped over, um, that was amazing. <laughs> Well, that's one of the interesting things about the Emacs community, right? There's just so much going on and, and so many good ideas coming out all the time. So, yeah. so clearly, you know, Org was one of the, the nice, amazing contributions. But how about you, when you're using Emacs, what are some of the other things that you use Emacs with? Well, so the point when I really found out how amazing Emacs is when uh, was when I discovered uh, the calculator. Cal- <laughs> yes. And that was, I mean... I, I, at the time, I was working in America at the NASA Institute, and they had this uh, this they had this great setup because this I mean this was an institute behind a fence, so everybody who was in there was completely security security approved. So inside, everything basically was uh, easily accessible for everything. For example, they had a printer queue there. You could just take a document and print it to that queue, and at the next morning, this thing would be bound as a book on your table. Wow. Or you could print images to a slide printer and say, would, would make slides out of it. I mean, and, and uh, just put it uh, back on your table. That was really fantastic. And so I used that to print a couple of manuals. And I was just uh, casually looking at the calc manual and then printed it. And it came back like a pile. I mean, this size. It was this gigantic book. And it totally sucked me in. I, I took this book and I read it over the weekend from the first to the last page, the entire book, because I thought it was written so amazing. It's hilarious. And then, yes. It's and I started reading the code, which is amazing because yeah. everybody always says that code should be documented, should have lots of comments, it should have documentation strings. Well, you would be amazed. I don't know if you have ever ever looked at the code of Calc. There's no comments in there. There are no documentation strings for most of the functions, but you can still read it. This amazed me so much. So it 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 told me that that a person who has enough clarity in their head when writing code, they even can make code readable without uh, putting a lot of extra comments and documentation. So that was really amazing. So I totally fell in love with this program and uh, just uh, started studying and, and using it. And I'm, I'm using it there to this day. I think it's a, it's such an amazing marriage of two worlds. On the, on the one hand, he has made this, I mean, he started out, it's actually also uh, maybe just a little detour. If you read his introduction to the manual or to the tutorial, he said that he was just uh, trying to write this in order to find out what uh, 2 to the power, I don't know, whatever it was, uh, 10 or whatever, some, some no, not 2 to the power 10, 2 to the power 32 or so. And he couldn't do this on a normal calculator, so he wanted to do this, and he said, well, he chose Emacslib because he decided this is just an editor extension language, so he would surely hit a wall very soon, and then this project would be over. Well, <laughs> It never did apparently. So on the one hand, on the one hand, he, impl- he implemented this amazing functionality. I mean, so there's it's like a, a, a poor man's Mathematica. It's of course not as good as Mathematica for complex stuff, but it does really uh, matrix multiplic- matrix operations. It does uh, some analytic ob- operations, integration, differentiation, um, all implemented there. And it was written in a time when Emacs didn't even have floating point numbers. Wow. It only had integers. So he implemented arbitrary partition into integers with list, <laughs> lists of numbers and he implemented arbitrary floating point calculation, calculation <laughs> with this thing and today I mean I think uh, Calc has not been rewritten to make use of the internal <laughs> floating point so all the floating point operations are actually hand implemented it's uh, crazy wow. uh, so there's all this complex stuff in there but on the other hand he um, uh, Calc keeps 
the simple calculator interface. I mean, if you are, if you use Mathematica, for example, then you have to um, type all these commands. There's just a lot of typing, and uh, the commands are pretty uh, complex. While with the calc calculator and Emacs, it's still you press a key and you get an action, just like you have it on the calculator. Yeah? So, so you so you press uh, the logarithmic uh, key, and uh, a logarithm will be calculated. In calc, it's usually two keys. So usually it's a sort of a, a, a category key, like arithmetic or matrix or so, and then a second key for the command. It's extremely fast. It has the best way to work with units of numbers. And uh, I mean, I'm an astronomer, so we deal with big numbers. And uh, having the right units uh, ready is. Uh, and uh, when I sit here with my students, I very often they come with something, with an idea or so, and then I just turn around to my Emacs and make a little estimate using the unit uh, calculation facilities. And then it's really the fastest and best way uh, to do this. So I totally love this. I mean, I. I have an iPad. The one reason why I hate it is that I cannot have Emacs on it just for the calculator. <laughs> this is how, how good this program is. It's uh, amazing. It's, I always have the feeling it's not known well enough. So this is why I use this chance to make a big adver advertisement for it because it's, um, it's an amazing program. It's really mind-blowing. So have you gotten all the rest of your students hooked on Emacs to use Calc? Well, yes, I know. Uh, um, <laughs> Many of them use Emacs, uh, I, I know that. There was one student who actually picked it up only in order to be able to do these unit calculations. <laughs> and of course, I mean, so the uh, the other stuff in Emacs, which I wrote myself, was of course all related to uh, to doing, doing science, to write scientific papers. So there's, as I already said, there's a couple of stuff uh, which I did for writing LaTeX and for in particular for doing bibliographies and cross-referencing of uh, LaTeX documents. That's one part. But yeah, then there's another thing that um, I took over maintenance of a package which interacted with basically with a programming language which, which is used by many astronomers for data processing. Mm -hmm. It's called IDL. It's, mm -hmm. an, it's a proprietary uh, language, unfortunately, with extremely expensive uh, license fees which you have to pay so this is uh, unfortunate that's why I'm still using a very old version of it um, but so there's an Emacs mode which interacts with it and which does the syntax highlighting and you can run it from within Emacs and it uh, just uh, gets us one step closer to the uh, to the ideal of never having to leave Emacs uh, during the entire day. <laughs> So, well, according, so there's org, there's um, there's calc, there's IDL. What are the things that you stay in Emacs almost the entire day? <laughs> well, I mean, any kind of programming and then using the debugger as a programming environment, I do that uh, in Emacs. Uh, I, I, I do that. I'm not doing my mail in Emacs. I used to use uh, VM mm -hmm. at, uh, for a while, I think a couple of years uh, I used uh, VM, but I've stopped doing this because I do most of my email now on a laptop on a train while I'm offline. Yeah. And so I think for offline work, Emacs is, at least at the last time I looked, for offline mail work, it wasn't really as good. I don't know if it uh, works now with, uh, with GNU's or so, it's possible. But um, when, when, when I, I stopped doing this, so I'm using, I have an Apple laptop, so I use a mail program there. Mm -hmm. But so, yeah, uh, programming, uh, writing, um, drafting papers, also drafting presentations. I don't make the full presentation, but sort of like the, the collection of the ideas. Mm -hmm. um, outlines, I think, are really the I ideal companion to thinking and brainstorming and throwing out your ideas. And this is really a big part of uh, my day. Also, when I take notes, I mean, uh, no longer in, in lectures because I have, I have move to the other side, have to give lectures now instead of <laughs> listening to lectures, so that's good. <laughs> One advantage. Um, but in meetings, I mean, uh, in meetings, taking notes and uh, putting down action items and stuff like this, um, I use that all the time. Yeah. Um, this is stuff uh, which I use, uh, what else? Well, I don't browse the web inside Emacs, even though that used to be possible as well. I don't know. W3M, I used that a lot before too. WM3 or yeah. W3M or what yeah, is it yeah. called? Well, there's a, yeah. there's a W3, which was all Emacs Lisp, which was like, oh, a web browser entirely in Emacs Lisp. And then there's yeah. W3M, which I think had an external library that you that external oh, yeah, that's right. that it integrated with, uh, which is actually really cool to browse stuff with because you would strip out all the other junk. Um, so it's, it's yeah. fast. Are you using it uh, inside Emacs? I used or? to. Uh, I, I sometimes use that when I need to work with a keyboard macro and lots of pages if I don't need JavaScript because the JavaScript thing really screws it up and many, many websites now are, are heavily dependent on JavaScript. 
but okay. uh, but I've, I've done that. I've also done the offline meal thing before with news and offline IMAP. So and how did you do that? Okay, with, with yeah, news yeah. and with offline IMAP. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. offline IMAP grabs all your mail and then you use something like Postfix or, or, or uh, you know, send mail or one of those to queue your mail. So okay. from Emacs' point of view, you're online because it's checking an IMAP server. It's checking, a, it's checking okay. the, or, or a mail there for your incoming mail and it's sending mail out. This is your, your system holds on to all the mail until you're back online. Okay, so maybe so, I should uh, give that another shot at some point. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, um, yeah. You mentioned keyboard macros, of course, uh, ah. absolute power user tool. I mean, um, yes, I use that all the time. Mm. Or a quick um, Emacs list, you know, function to do some text manipulation or whatever. It's it's really it's amazing to have all those tools. Yeah, and as I said, I mean, even if I have to go through a through a program and uh, make a couple of replacements, I rather write a little function than uh, doing it by hand. <laughs> <laughs> Well, other stuff which I use, I use uh, Tramp yes. uh, to edit files on, on different computers. I find that uh, extremely useful. Um, I've always thought about uh, taking up ERC, so, so IRC basically, and use Emacs for this. Yes. Um, but I never really have, so it's uh, just, yeah, I'm a li little bit fearful that this will be too much <laughs> of a time, uh, time waster. <laughs> That's true, because once, uh, once the Emacs channel sees you, goodness, you'll get a lot of comments and questions and people like, oh, the org mode channel on Freenode is, is very active from time to time. Okay. And uh, yeah. of course, the Emacs channel has a great community as well. So I usually, I have my Emacs set up now to connect to IRC in the background. And then if there's any activity or if, actually if, if people mention me, then it shows up in my mode line. Sometimes I'll flip through it if I've got, you know, if I'm procrastinating something else. But Sounds like some setup which you put in, should you should put into your next blog post. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, because or can you know can easily keep, remind you what your current task is supposed to be, I yeah. found that it isn't too distracting. It's great way okay. to. Uh, it's it's kind of like, yeah, occasionally hearing about interesting Emacs things that you wouldn't have come across yourself. Yes. Because people are asking questions and answering them. Yeah, and sometimes, of course, you you just need to procrastinate a little bit, and you can be helpful and uh, uh, give somebody else uh, some advice. I think that can also be fun. Yeah, yeah. But yes. you hang out in all those other places also where you bump into other Emacs geeks. So you're active in the mailing lists and news groups. Where else yes. do you, you know, where else do you learn about Emacs? Well, I'm. I have uh, an RSS feed in my unfortunately dying Google Reader, no. which uh, looks uh, for this kind of stuff. So I have to find a replacement. That's what I do. Um, I read your blog. Uh, did I mention yeah. that before? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's some stuff on there. I there's there's these great. Um, I think it's called Emacs Rocks or so. Oh, That's yes. I think a series of uh, short screencasts, which are a lot of fun. It's kind of crazy stuff what he picks there, but it's. Uh, Kind of, here's a great way of, of uh, showing yeah. this stuff off. I love that. Uh, that's what I do. I've um, one of the things where I'm uh, sometimes still have trouble is uh, colors. So I've uh, right now um, discovered the solarized color oh, yes. scheme. Do you know that's that uh, for Emacs? I think it's it's actually pretty. And um, so maybe I'm going to uh, to uh, try that out uh, for a while. Um, I love full screen mode actually, which now mm -hmm. finally also works uh, with Emacs 24. It uh, seems to work on on Mac as well. Mm. Um, you never tried that? No, no. That's I great. It just uh, it just uh, it's just uh, it makes your Emacs window full screen. It uh, puts away uh, menu bar and, uh, oh, yeah. and uh, toolbar and everything full screen, and uh, so you don't see anything else, and then you can uh, focus on writing. That is. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, can, I've had, can be useful. I've had um, the menu bar and the toolbar and all that stuff disabled sure. for a while now. Uh, but it's yeah, we we all accumulate these little customizations, and then someone goes off and packages them, which is nice. Well, yeah. What else is in your? Um, yeah, I know you've said your Emacs file is like not ready for public <laughs> consumption. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's. Uh, I, I saw you uh, doing one of your other chats. I saw you go through. Uh, was it? Uh, uh, somebody's uh, well, email shared file. his and, and Thomas yes. shared his as well. We can certainly walk through one of that. Or uh, on the other hand, if it's you're like it's a total mess and I don't want to show any of this. No, I, I, I think it's also not so interesting because I think in the <laughs> end my my Emacs customiza customization is is a relatively basic stuff stuff which you have uh, shown off before. It's uh, <laughs> so it, 
<laughs> no, I, no, I really, I really think so. I mean, I use Emacs uh, the basic way it is, and then uh, mostly extensions which uh, I actually have with myself because, yes. See, so <laughs> because they the are difference. the ones which, ex which, which exactly do what I want. There and so you go. That. So yeah. the, the difference here is a lot of people have really big Emacs files. You package your Emacs con customizations as packages. <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it and send it out. Exactly. <laughs> And it just also happens, I guess, that the defaults are the way that you work. So, that, you know. Well, that's that's a very good point. I mean, this uh, this is uh, really if you if you write your own package, then you get to decide what the default setting of all those variables is. And of <laughs> course, they are what I like. <laughs> that is true. Even though I'm not in control currently of Orkwood, I mean, yeah. uh, right now it's uh, Bastian is doing this, doing a great job. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's always fantastic to see, you know, a, a package grow up, you know, get other maintainers, other people add their own spin to it. And you keep, you know, you keep getting the benefits without having to do as much hard work. <laughs> exactly. I mean, the mailing list for Orkmode, I think that this uh, up is currently at 60 or 70 mails a day, something like this is really uh, crazy. Yeah, I check in every so often because there's just a lot of volume, but there's also a lot of good, you know, configuration snippets or new features yeah. that show up. I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't know we did this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we never split uh, the mailing list into uh, sort of like uh, help and uh, development or so. We just uh, kept everything together. Yeah, because it's uh, it's uh, kind of fun. Yeah, what else do I use? Uh, let me just uh, think about it. Well, I used to use uh, GNU's to read uh, as a news reader, mm -hmm. but um, I've, yeah, unfortunately, I've sort of stopped uh, reading uh, using it, uh, news because it was really too much. I mean, I have a couple of mailing lists which I subscribe to, and that just uh, gets filtered out in my email stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, really going on Usenet and reading this stuff, so uh, there I sort of have stopped that. Yeah, I have. Um, I have news it's just that it's just too much. Yeah. I have it still set up with some of the Emacs news groups, but then I forget for long periods of time. So then I was like, okay, time to go back in there and, and start looking around. But it's easy yeah, to the, forget. Yeah, and the other thing is there's, of course, uh, Gmain, where you yeah. can uh, so nicely search all the old stuff. You can just go back, and if you missed something, you just uh, go back far enough and uh, look uh, stuff up there. Yeah. That's, uh, that's also possible. Uh, what else do I use? Well, I can open my file, but I'm not going to show it to you. <laughs> that's all right. That's, <laughs> As I said, uh, but I actually, of course, I mean, I do use Babel to tangle it. You asked me that question in the in the run up to this. Yes. Um, so I certainly do this, but there's uh, really very little interesting stuff. Yeah. So as I said, IDL and IDL well, This is this uh, programming language um, uh, where there's this interface which I also worked on. I use uh, that a lot. Um, I do a little bit of encryption, so I have, uh, but yeah. not systematically. I have uh, one or two files which I read encrypted, oh, yes, and yes. this automatic decryption thingy when you open it in Emacs. Right, so basically, my my password file is a is a file which is an encrypted file, mm -hmm. uh, which I keep in uh, keep in this way. Uh, fly spell stuff. Yeah, BBDB. I used to I used to be a big user of BBDB. Yeah. Um, has also a little bit decreased because I do my mail now in, in yeah. Apple Mail and then the interaction with uh, that contact manager is not as good anymore. Yeah, and I, I, I also had extensive notes in BBDB. I had it uh, hooked into news so that every time I sent mail, it would update the BBDB record as well with a subject line. But, yeah. um, but since I've moved to Google Mail and Google Contacts, I haven't really been doing the synchronization as much, which is a pity. Yeah, cool. Google Contact is really the best place eh, because that's so. I think that has a f the 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 largest range of uh, synchronization possibilities, yeah. Yeah. all kinds of uh, of uh, stuff. That's good. While I'm also, of course, a big uh, Git user and Magit user, but yeah, I think you have discussed this before, so maybe this is uh, not so interesting. Not so it interesting. Is awesome. Good. Yeah. Oh, that. It, it, don't worry about repeating anything that we've discussed again. Emacs is awesome. People will will use different parts of its awesomeness. Yeah, Magit is really good, and also because of the integration with uh, with uh, change log uh, entry creation and stuff like this. Oh, that actually may be interesting because I mean, if you so if you write an Emacs package, which is which will be part of Emacs, Emacs of course requires you to produce change log entries in the right format, huh? and you have so you have this special file, the change log file, which you have to do, and uh, for really a number of years we we basically had to do double bookkeeping in org mode because we just i mean of course we oh, had yeah, a yeah. I we, heard we about had a that version recent mix that recent shift 
Uh, yes, so so we had a had a versioning system, and then we were still keeping all these change logs. Also, or even worse, when it uh, when it came towards a release time, I would actually go through and look at all the changes, and then sort of more or less by hand produce all those change log entries. Some, sometimes I would only produce half and hope that the Emacs maintainer wouldn't notice. <laughs> so that was really that was really terrible. And, <laughs> yeah, and the way we do it now is uh, that we just um, we only use Git. Uh, no changelog files, uh, but we just uh, we just enforce that the that the description of the change in the git uh, commit message has to be formatted in a way that it will work as a changelog entry. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, at release time, we just have a little script which uses git to extract uh, all these things and uh, put them into a changelog file. This is really a, a very simple solution, but uh, very effective. Yes, yes. <clears throat> so that's uh, how we do this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. People were just talking about that in the Emacs channel today. Because if you if you if you're doing that double bookkeeping, you're like, okay, change log. Yes, there's a merge conflict. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So um, that was a useful uh, thingy, um, and that's already basically all the all the uh, setup which I have in my uh, in my Emacs file. So it's a uh, I'm I'm sure it's much more limited than what uh, many other people have. Yeah. But uh, but cool. that doesn't that, that doesn't keep me from uh, from using it every day and uh, yeah for many hours. I think really my day is really split half between uh, mail and Emacs. I think that these are the two things which I look at, mm -hmm. and um, that's it. What do you wish yeah. you could do with Emacs that you're currently not doing? What do I wish I could do with uh, Emacs that I'm currently not doing? Yeah, it's a good question. Sometimes I wish so when I when I uh, use uh, um, org files to to uh, write down notes, and uh, I would like to be able to make a drawing. Did you know about so artist mode? <laughs> I have tried it. I think it's, it's extremely cool. I actually started writing extensions to artist mode to uh, make it a bit. So I, see, I have this idea so that I, I sit in a colloquium in our institute. There's a guy, this guy discussing something, and so I'm taking notes. And then I would like to make uh, him. He has a beautiful image. So I just would like to make a drawing with a with a few lines, and. Um, I've tried to use artist mode for this, but I couldn't it's not quite, get it. Yeah. Could, couldn't get it fast enough so that yeah. it would actually be feasible to do this. Yeah, it actually oh. surprisingly works well with a tablet PC because I have a screen that swivels around and becomes a tablet. So when you're drawing on the screen, it actually draws in artist mode as well. <laughs> so you have it. Oh, so maybe I should throw away my iPad and get an Android. <laughs> so what? So what are you no, using? No, there? I have a I have a tablet PC, so it's a. Ah, it's Okay. Yeah, so it's a Lenovo X220 with a, you know, it's a proper computer and I can run Emacs on it, which is how I, it's, it's, it's heavy, but um, and so that is and, and so that is, is like as, as if you would sort of take your mouse in order to, to draw and artist mode and just uh, follow these lines. Mm -hmm. Ah. But you're drawing on the screen, so it is more convenient. Uh, I, I came across that because uh, I was giving a talk on Emacs to uh, the local Linux users group and, and naturally we got derailed by people joking about what, oh, what Emacs you know, uh, uh, oh, can you do this? And it's like, actually, yeah, there's a mode for that. Let's give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's always a mode for this. Huh? And I was I surprised mean, it worked. <laughs> yes. That is uh, that is great. Even XKCD has realized that Emacs has for everything. Is there? I think there was one or two, one or two XKCD jokes are about uh, Emacs, I remember. Yes, yes. There was a butterfly one, which that actually was one? Made, itself, we made its way into Emacs as a command. And then there was the one that you linked to recently with a workflow. Uh, yes, yes, exactly. Yes. Oh, you saw that. Yeah, that, I thought it was so awesome with the workflow because this is the truth, isn't it? I yes. mean, whenever you, whenever you make a change, um, somebody will say, this uh, <laughs> breaks my workflow. <laughs> Especially in Emacs where we like, you know, we do these convoluted things that just tailor it exactly to fit how we work. Yeah. Actually, I'm, I'm also using eShell every oh, yes. now and then. Yes. I think that's also John's, is that right? Yes, it is. Did, did he write this? It's crazy enough for John having done this. So this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's amazing. I mean, it's amazing what uh, he has been doing, uh, this kind of stuff. Um, that's uh, what I'm using. Yeah, what else would I like it? Also, I mean, in the so in in the sense of uh, being able to draw, sometimes it would be nice to pull in a little image and just uh, drop it there. Is that possible? Um, you're so trying to like, 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 like inline image support, right? 
<laughs> yeah, I know you can, but can you sort of pull it in and drop it? I mean, I'm, I'm thinking out of, see, I think a good, competi a good nice. competing program for note-taking would be Evernote. Yeah, I think yeah, that's, yeah. I think it would be great to have drag-and-drop functionality. Just for an, for an image, so that sometimes a note uh, would be helped by an image, and you can, of course, uh, put in a link, but to just have a little image in that file might be useful. Yes, yes. I think that sounds like an excellent org feature request. Yes. <laughs> Maybe it could be done in a way that it actually is in the file is a link, and then we use the attachment uh, yeah. feature of Orgmo to, uh, to put it somewhere into, in a related directory. <laughs> we could think about this. Yeah. That's uh, that's great. Um, yeah, I'm also I'm, uh, another thing I'm using are the tables in oh, in yes. Orkut, uh, quite a bit. Um, uh, so to, to also to just capture a little bit of data to throw it around if I'm not if I don't feel like uh, using using Excel for this, uh, but uh, just something smaller. Every so often I go through the the org manual and the source code and it's like, oh yeah, hey look, we can do column stretch, you know, column equations and other things here. Yes. It's like holy cow. Yeah, that uh, that is possible. Even though um, actually, the, I think that so the the table editor I think needs a rewrite. I've looked at that code recently because there was a bug report, mm -hmm. and um, I wasn't able to fix this bug because it was so convoluted and uh, hard to maintain. And that's this that's this one thing which is I think which is great in Emacs and uh, which I have used uh, too much sometimes. Um, in Lisp, of course, in Emacs Lisp, you have dynamic scoping. Yeah? So you can basically uh, write a let statement and uh, assign a variable to, uh, uh, yeah, to take a make a variable and assign a new value to it, and then call some other function. So in this way, you sort of change the background in which this other function will work. Mm -hmm, and so yes. it's not a parameter which you actually hand to that function, but you change the uh, the background, and then you can make it something crazy. This is, can be really powerful. But of course, also dangerous eh? because it reduces maintainability if you if you use these hidden ways of com of communicating to another function. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've uh, made use of this uh, sometimes too often, and I think in the table editor that uh, has uh, caused problem. So I'm thinking sort of as uh, one project if I ever have a chunk of time, like an, a week or two, where I don't uh, really have to do anything else, to just uh, sit down and uh, rewrite the thing in a cleaner way. That would be fun. <laughs> I find I find the programming in in Emacs Lisp totally relaxing. I mean, did you also have this when you you were doing so much that it's like it's just uh, like a, like a cooling off and hanging down? I, because um, once you get really proficient in it, it becomes an easy and very engaging and nice uh, little exercise. So I, I I just use this as a way to relax sometimes. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes, yes. Well, I, I totally get where you're where you're coming from because it's it it's and it's it's great because you can easily do things. You know, you can reach out yes. and, and you can combine different packages and you you know play around with internals and just smoosh them together, tweak things to make things fit you. So yeah, and it's also I mean, um, quite often when I have uh, students come in and they want to do a little project and then they want to program and they then there's a discussion about which programming language to use or. In the institute, we often have a discussion. We should uh, train our students more in programming language. Which language should be the right one? And I always uh, think it doesn't really matter because if you know one programming language, you know them all. But there's one exception, and that's Lisp. <laughs> <laughs> because Lisp is, I think, Lisp is the one language which is really different mm -hmm. from all the others. Eh? Because uh, the concept is really, um, is really completely the other way around. I mean, if you write a list well, then you hardly ever assign uh, values to variables yes. because it's just one flow through this chain of uh, forms and uh, function calls yes. and um, in, in, in which way this is organized. So this is, I think that's one of the reasons why I started to learn it because I thought that that was an interesting uh, concept. So and, you, you work with a ton of lists. Um, so what do you do in terms of, you know, debugging, refactoring it? Have you come across any great tips or is it just e-debug all the way? It's uh, it's e-debug basically. Yeah, that's what I use. <laughs> Pro um, profiling mm. is extremely, I, I th that is really the key to it. I mean, so, okay, to to find the bugs, it's just uh, e-debug in, in fact, yes. Um, but then when you, when you have written the code to just uh, make it a habit to profile uh, stuff which you have written and to see where it's spending its time 
uh, that is, I think, is also a good way to debug because often that means it's spending its time with something which is not uh, really useful or necessary. So you just have uh, done this in a bad way, and it's a it's a great way to educate yourself to uh, to do good programming. Mm. Yeah, profiling, I think, is um, teaches you a lot about uh, the yourself and programming style and where you should put uh, should pay attention. Yeah, because otherwise you can sp spend days of making a little corner of your code uh, nice and smooth and work better. Uh, to basically no outside effect, and sometimes you can uh, put in an hour. I remember that we had these uh, these issues um, in the past. That uh, I don't know the uh, agenda was extremely slow at some point, mm -hmm. and uh, there have been several steps to really speed this up. Bastian has recently uh, worked on this, but already a couple of years ago, we basically sped everything up by a factor of ten or twenty, by sort of uh, just finding a couple of stupid uh, things where things were not done in a good way. Mm -hmm. And that comes out of a profiler because you never know. I mean, you just sit there, you wait for the thing. It takes 20 seconds to uh, to give you something, <clears throat> and you have no idea why. Yeah. And, and the Emacs the Emacs profiler works really well. Have you ever used it? Um, sometimes when I'm, you know, uh, when when uh, after John and I talk, we because he he talks about profiling his init file, right? So you can yes. start, you know, really streamlining it. And it's like, well, that's that's great. Uh, I don't actually re restart Emacs that often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's you know it's great to be able to see you know the numbers right next to all the code, so yeah. that is cool. Yeah, that's fun. That's actually interesting. I start restart Emacs uh, very often. Oh, it's, uh, it, it, this way I'm a bad Emacs no, citizen. No, no, now. it's it. Uh, he mentioned <laughs> it, he does that so that he he you know he can make sure that errors don't accumulate and he always you know that things have. This, yeah. Uh, my my problem is that sometimes I make a lot of Emacs changes and I'm like, okay, time for debug in it because I broke something. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, no, it's just, I mean, uh, everybody says uh, always Emacs is so stable and so good, and so you should only start it once in the morning, but um, I don't really mind. I mean, like two or three seconds startup time is uh, not a major problem, I think. And uh, I, re I restarted to sort of get it out of the way, and I also don't like to accumulate hundreds of buffers. <laughs> because, uh, then uh, then, uh, then it uh, takes a bit more time to switch to another buffer or so. So mm -hmm. I restarted. But also I think uh, another reason is because I keep um, hacking at stuff, and uh, it's then good to restart, to have a clean state, to know what's actually going on, that you're not delivering something with, with something. Well, that can happen eh? if you sort of... Yeah change a file and then you load something in particular. I mean, Orkmode, for example, is built into Emacs, but of course there's also the development version and you sort of have to be sure that you are loading, loading the right file. There are all these issues with, uh, with load pass, yeah, uh, sh shadowing and so forth. So you have to be uh, careful about that. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, you know. Maybe I can ask you, I was, uh, yes. today I was looking for a program to change the size of the fonts in, in Emacs just stepwise, like a little command oh, to, control shift to increase plus. it. Doesn't it control doesn't shift plus. Got to be kidding me. Got to be kidding me. Uh, yeah, it's, it's text scale increase in face remap. Text scale increase. I was looking for this and I couldn't find it. <laughs> Let me just uh, write it down. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Control shift, you know, so so it's basically control plus, control minus does this like text scaling thing. Well, it, uh, I I don't have these bindings here oh, right now don't? because maybe, maybe yeah. I've used it for something. But if I know the uh, the command name, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's good. I used to because have my for, own for, version for, of full, this. for full screen mode, I want to increase the font size, uh, maybe just temporarily a little bit. Clack 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 clack. Yeah. And uh, okay, text scaling. <laughs> that's what. <it> was. Good. <laughs> Learn something today. It's kind of funny. It's, it's hard for me to tell now which which key bindings are mine and which ones are Emacs. So it helps. Yeah, that is yeah that uh, that is uh, sometimes a problem. Also, I mean they they change it. It happens that they change it. Eh? So yeah. you get new version of Emacs and they have changed something and you don't see it because you have already overloaded it in a different way. Yeah, or in my, uh, also because you know I I have one of those large configurations where I forget things um, that I've already put in there. <laughs> Like oh yeah, the, you know why am I defining this? Why am I defining my own count words when it or it now exists in Emacs? Does it? I have my own. Too. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> count words has finally made it in. I think it was of Emacs twenty four. <laughs> okay, I I didn't hear that. <laughs> it's in it simple dot el. <laughs> does it work? Uh, apparently so. <laughs> Because yeah, one of the problems, of, of course, is that um, lots of stuff which I write is written in LaTeX. Yeah, yes, yes. So you have. Of course, yes, there's the... lots of command stuff which you sort of wouldn't uh, would prefer not to count. Yeah, so you still probably need your own. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. 
I remember, I remember coming across, you know, because I, I like looking at the uh, Emacs wiki and other people's configuration, and so I end up accumulating all these snippets here and there. Um, yeah. But yeah, sometimes we're like, what? everybody needs to re-implement count words. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Are you using uh, Babel to uh, to tangle your input, for, uh, your init file or not? I did the lazy thing. I just installed, uh, whatchamacallit, Emacs starter kit. So okay. I, I let that do all of the, uh, oh, okay, load the sasha.el, et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay. And then it, it handles my configuration file. That way, it, I think it does byte compiling as well automatically, so I don't have to remember to do that myself. Okay. I don't byte, because you byte compile your init file. I can't I, remember. I, I basically leave it to okay. Emacs starter kit to do, to do, it. <laughs> <laughs> to do whatever is right. <laughs> But yeah. it, it does it does auto tangle for me, which is nice because okay. then I don't have okay. to remember to republish. Yeah, that's uh, that's annoying. So I have to turn that on. That is important. Yeah, um, and then and then I so I, I share the org file and the, the generated Emacs file and all that stuff through Dropbox, so people can easily get to it even after you know when I, whenever I change my config, it's up there already. So you have it in your public folder, so yeah. people can. Uh, I, grab I it basically up. have a secret file where all my, you know, passwords are, right? But you can always include yeah, that fully. without including everything else. Um, yes. And so the rest of my config is public, which is great right. because I have accidentally deleted stuff before. <laughs> so it, it's nice to be able to search the internet. Yes, that's right. <laughs> well, an accidentally delete, I mean, uh, I hope you have your configuration under Git. And it's, it's actually slightly more annoying because I'm stuck on Windows for uh, for these drawing programs that I like using with my tablet. So it's not as easy to set up, you know, this lovely version control thing. And it's, uh, like, uh, I, I have Git. I use it for source code, but I actually don't have my config in it yet. I yeah, should do that. Should. Yeah, I think you should because then you can always go back. And then you can see the history of your configuration changes as well, which is interesting. But one of yeah. the things I have have started doing, um, you probably come across this in my blog as well, is starting to use org drill to remember what's in my yes. configuration. Yeah, I've, I've never used org drill. I know it exists. Does it work? It, it's actually really helpful. I've been using it to study for cool. various tests as well. Um, I used to use Flashcard uh, before, so Flashcard yes. L did, uh, did that kind of spaced repetition too. And the nice thing about Emacs, of course, is you can hack things around. So with Flashcard, I'd set it up to show me a fortune cookie every time I got something correct. Yes. And then once I had gone through the entire <laughs> fortune file, I, I think I had it set up to show me uh, cute pictures of kittens from, uh, from Cute Overload or something like that. And that keeps you motivated. Yes. <laughs> So Emacs is an eminently hackable thing. Yeah, this is, um, yeah, I, I just love it because um, um, I remember that at some point uh, we had a discussion about is it useful to use something as complex as, for example, org mode, or is it better to use something which is very bare bones and basics and not get distracted by <laughs> configuring your tool? And I, I sort of, I, I was about to, to, uh, to, to, to think about if I didn't agree with people who wanted uh, to have yeah, couldn't so that you can't use your system to procrastinate. But on the other hand, then <laughs> I, I really came down on the side that I actually want my computer to work exactly yes. how I want it. Yeah, you know, I mean, my you know what my prompt is on in, in my terminal window? It's uh, it's sir with a question mark. So like an English <laughs> butler would ask you what to do next. And I, I I like this kind of attitude of my computer towards me to just uh, stand there and wait and then do exactly what I want. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it should be. It, it, it is very tempting to just spend all that time customizing Emacs and looking at other people's stuff and, and you yeah. know, writing all those little hacks for your packages or whatever. Um, but it pays off, you know, because then you don't have to think about it so much. You just work the way that you work. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there are days when you have to uh, self-censor and uh, stop yourself. <laughs> but... Uh, Normally, I agree. I can. I, I just uh, use this stuff in downtime, which uh, where I couldn't really do something else any, um, otherwise anyway. So. And as you said, it's your form of relaxation. <laughs> yes. No. I, it, it totally is. I mean, it's my hobby. <laughs> yes. Like other people do uh, would knit or something like this. <laughs> Awesome. I never quite thought of it, thought about it like knitting, but um, I can see. I how think it's very be. close to knitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see. I can uh, see that now. Very much like it. I mean, it keeps your brain engaged. And maybe knitting doesn't so much. I don't know. I've, uh, I'm not a big knitter. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah. Yeah, and and 
then you, you get the benefits whenever you're working too. So it's very productive work. Yeah. That said, I could probably spend hours just going through the random pages in Emacs wikis. So, <laughs> so yes. yes, there are temptations. Uh, sounds like fun. <laughs> Yeah, so thanks for sharing your stories. Um, you know, no, that uh, was a lot of fun. Will we get to see you yes. at the conference on March 30? Uh, I have actually no idea which conference you are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, so you. probably not. Probably not. <laughs> is, there, is there a conference which I should know about? The Emacs conference thing, which they're organizing in London. Uh, I see. No, I'm not going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> I have uh, I have so many conferences to go to, so um, no, I'm not yes, coming. Unfortunately, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, a couple of people are, are skyping in with their talks, uh, and I think you know I, I'm looking forward to to the chance to see you know more than three Emacs geeks in the same room, which will yes. be a bit of a mind-boggling experience. But um, yeah. I'm sure there'll be other ones, and um, and maybe I'll get to see you face to face then. Yeah, I'm sure it would be uh, it would be awesome. <laughs> I would just like to uh, say also thank you to, to to you, Sasha. I think you really have been an inspiration God. in the sense that, I mean, you have been um, so so visible and so public um, with your Emacs stuff and in general as a person. And um, I've enjoyed this a lot. So mm -hmm. it was uh, always very nice to uh, to read stuff about you. Emacs is so amazing. You know, I feel like I've barely scratched the surface, even though I've been using it for so long. And and gotten to know so many of these these amazing packages. There's just always so much more coming out. And yeah. it's it's an incredible community to belong to. Yeah. Get started at Calc. Take a look at this uh, thing. Mm, there you go. It's, that's that's gonna be my so homework. Great. <laughs> exactly. I remember reading the manual and laughing out loud. So yeah, Yes, yeah. the manual is very funny as as well. Yeah. Just tutorial at the manual and uh, yeah, it's really yeah. nice. Well, go check that out. I want to. I want to see if there are other things we can do to make it easier for new newcomers to Emacs to get started. So yeah. certainly, you know, showing the real people using Emacs and um, and and helping people learn. So right up there in that list. Okay. Thank you again. See you Thank around. you, Sasha. This was uh, fun this was and good luck. Fun. Bye. Goodbye.